if you're not using your air fryer every single day, then you definitely need some ideas. This is coming from someone who uses our air fryer multiple times every single day. This appliance is definitely life-changing. So here's at least 30 ideas on how to use your air fryer. So I hope you get some use out of it because if you got one for Christmas this year or last year, I promise I won't tell, let's just get started. Let's jump in with the first one. It's air fryer s'mores, so good, way better than doing s'mores in the microwave, like by a long shot. First you start with graham crackers or you know, you could use whatever cookies you like. And then we're going to do chocolate. I actually really love using the Hershey's cookies and cream bars. Those are so good. Good. And I don't like a lot of chocolate, so I just do a little bit. And for this, you'll want to start with a preheated air fryer. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. Next, take your marshmallows. And here's the thing with the marshmallows. You have to tear them apart. So then you get that sticky stuff in the middle like this, and then you stick them onto your graham cracker like that. If you don't do this, then your marshmallow will fly off your graham cracker and it will just get stuck in your air fryer. And that's not good. So just make sure everything is on your graham cracker. And then we're gonna do this in a preheated air fryer, 400 degrees for two minutes. Minutes. If your air fryer cooks a little faster, then you'll want to keep an eye on it, but two minutes in the air fryer. Here are our s'mores. Look how puff they look awesome. If you want them to be more well done, you can obviously leave them in longer, but just note that the chocolate and the graham cracker might get a little toasty. Okay, check out that yummy s'more. It is so gooey and melted. Mm, yeah, not good. Enjoy. One of my absolute favorite foods on planet Earth are almond croissants. And when I can't get them at a fancy French bakery, I love to get them at Costco. So these are good on their own as is, and they're even better warmed up. Just even in the microwave, they get a little soft and just, oh, they're so good. But they are the best in the air fryer. So all you have to do is take a pastry, put it in the air fryer, and then I'm only gonna put it in for about one minute at 400 degrees. You can check on it about halfway through or you can add more time if you want it a little bit more crispy, but this just makes everything amazing. If you have any pastries or danishes that have a little bit of frosting or glaze on them, the top gets nice and caramelized and crystallized. It is so heavenly and I know you will love it. Next, I love to make leftovers. Literally anything that was made in the oven tastes better reheated in the air fryer versus the microwave. So this last weekend I made some brie cheese and instead of warming up my huge oven, waiting for it to preheat and using the oven for 20 or 30 minutes just to get this little piece of brie to melt down and get crispy again, I'm going to use the air fryer. So like I said, I just took the piece of brie, I put it in an oven safe dish. Next, I'm going to air fry it. Okay, there are two options for something that is a small portion like this. The first option is to put it at a lower temperature in the air fryer and do it for a longer period of time, or I like to just kind of blast it. I'm gonna cover it with foil, put it in the air fryer, and then I'm going to cook it for about just five minutes or so. And then I'm going to take off the foil for about one or two minutes to crisp up the top. And here is the finished brie. Oh, look how good that is. I am obsessed with brie cheese. This is so much better than just warming it up in the microwave. Next, let's make two recipes at the same time. We're gonna make some toast and we're going to make an egg toast. Someone suggested to take a piece of toast, but to tear out or make a little indentation in the bread and then crack an egg in it. And if you remember <laughs> egg in a hole from your childhood, this might ring a bell. First, I'm gonna butter the bread. Butter both slices. Okay, now that our toast is buttered, this is preheated. I'll put in one slice here, and then we'll put in our egg toast in here as well. So I'll just take an egg and pop it right on top. Okay, I'll salt and pepper. Take my little red mineral salt shaker. Here we go. We're gonna put this in at 400 degrees, and this toast will be done in just about three or four, and this one will be done in, they said, about eight minutes. Okay, our toast has been in for five minutes and this looks amazing. So if you don't have a toaster, this is perfect. Our egg in the hole is not quite done yet, but I think just needs a couple more minutes. Oh no! My egg in the hole went down the hole. Okay, well here's most of our egg in the hole and there's the rest of it. So I guess with this one, make sure that your bread is deep enough or put your egg in a hole on a greased piece of parchment paper or oil. But besides that, 
these look pretty good and I'll still eat it. Okay, the number one thing that we make over and over again in our air fryer is bacon. To make bacon in your air fryer, I always put it in a cold air fryer and then I turn it on to 400 degrees and I go about five to seven minutes, checking about every 30 seconds starting after about half the time. So if I'll put it in for seven minutes, check it around four minutes and then about every 30 to 60 seconds after that. And if you like your bacon crispier, you can always add a couple seconds or if it looks good once you pull it out around six and a half minutes or six minutes, then you can take it from there. I love making bacon in my air fryer because one, it's pretty mess free and two, all that grease drips through the grate and so it's really easy to clean. The next thing we're gonna make are meatballs. Okay, frozen meatballs in the air fryer taste amazing because they get really nice and crisp and caramelized. They taste fried, but obviously they're not. So all you have to do is put these in a preheated air fryer, 400 degrees for about 10 minutes. If you look on the package directions of most of the things that you buy, this says 375 for 20 minutes. You can usually get away with about half the time. So let's just put them in here and you want to just check them with an instant read thermometer. These need to be at 165 and then they'll be safe to eat. And the reason why I give kind of a range of times is because every air fryer cooks differently. It's going to be just like a microwave. 30 seconds in my microwave might be sufficient for, you know, making something really hot, but in your microwave, it might take a minute or a minute and a half. So it's just like that with air fryers. There's a little bit of variability with the time. Just throw a couple meatballs in here, 400 degrees for 10 minutes. Okay, look at these. Wow, these have only been in for five minutes, but let's check the internal temp. They're still frozen on the inside. So let's give them a shake, put them in for another five minutes. Oh my gosh, look how good these look. Okay, these are to temp now. That was exactly 10 minutes. If you don't like them this crispy, then what you can do is just do them at a lower temperature for a couple more minutes. But you can see how the grease just goes down into the grate. So they're not greasy, but they're still so crispy. These are so delicious. One of the things that we love to do for a really quick and simple dinner is to make air fryer chicken wings. Making chicken wings in the air fryer is a total game changer because you just throw it in and less than 30 minutes later, you've got an incredibly delicious meal. The great thing about making chicken wings in the air fryer is that you can make them plain or you can add a little bit of breading, something to make them a little bit more crispy. The other great thing is that you can make them from fresh or frozen, so then it's really convenient if you forget to defrost or if you just have a bag of frozen chicken wings in your freezer. So to make the chicken wings, I preheat my air fryer to the highest setting it goes, usually between 400 and 425. Let it preheat for about four to 10 minutes. And then I'll just season my wings with a little bit of oil, salt and pepper, garlic powder, jerk seasoning, whatever you want. And then I throw them in there for about 25 minutes for frozen and 20 minutes for fresh. You wanna shake the wings every five minutes or so just to make sure they're getting evenly cooked and browned. So these are just frozen mozzarella sticks and they cook for about the same amount of time. So I'm going to put them on this side. These mozzarella sticks are frozen. They only cook at 400 degrees for about five to seven minutes. So they'll be done around the same time. Okay, here we are. I actually flipped the garlic toast about halfway between, but look how amazing that is. Oh my gosh, that smells so good. And our mozzarella sticks have busted just a little bit, but that's okay. They look awesome. The next thing I use my air fryer for weekly, almost daily, is for roasting vegetables. Specifically, I love doing broccoli. And then I always have it in the fridge, and while I'm preparing dinner, I can throw some broccoli in the air fryer at about 400 degrees or higher if your air fryer goes higher than that. But I do 400 degrees for about seven to eight minutes. All you have to do is add the broccoli to the air fryer basket. I like to spritz it with a little bit of olive oil spray, salt and pepper, garlic powder, and then just let it cook. And then I'll shake the basket about every two minutes or until it looks done and cooked to my liking. This recipe for air fryer chicken breast is really, really nice because you don't have to preheat your big oven to just make one or two chicken breasts. So the key to making chicken breast in the air fryer is to make sure that you're not putting a cold giant piece of chicken in the air fryer. Take that chicken breast out of the fridge between 45 and 60 minutes before you plan to cook them so it can kind of come up to room temperature. 
This will help the chicken cook much more evenly so it's not dry on the outside and raw on the inside. So after you take your chicken breasts that have been sitting at room temperature, I like to trim any fat or anything on them and then pat them down with a paper towel to dry them off. I like to spritz them with a little bit of olive oil and then season however you want. If you wanna go really simple, you can just do salt and pepper and some garlic powder. You can use a seasoning blend like lemon pepper or Cajun seasoning. And then you put them in the preheated air fryer at 360 degrees. Since chicken breasts are really thick, I like to cook them for about 25 to 30 minutes or until the internal temperature of that chicken reaches 165 degrees. Since it's cooking for a long time and I only have two of them in here, about halfway through cooking, you can add any sort of vegetable. Today I used carrots and then you have a full meal that's ready in the air fryer. If you want to butterfly your chicken breasts open so they're much thinner, if you want to pound them out, it will take much less time. So you can adjust to about 15 minutes or less. Just check them about every five minutes starting at the halfway point. This next one is really cool. It's making roasted garlic in the air fryer. After you take your fresh garlic cloves out, you just put them in a little square of foil and then I do salt and pepper, a little olive oil, and then you just wrap that up tightly, put it in a preheated air fryer around 350 to 400 degrees, just kind of that medium high temperature. And then I let that roast for about 20 minutes or until the garlic was soft and golden brown. After it cools, you can mash that up and put it into mashed potatoes. I made an incredible roasted garlic feta dip for Harmon's earlier this summer. It was out of this world, but it's so easy to do that. And then you don't have to like warm up the oven, just do it in the air fryer, especially for just like a couple cloves of garlic, definitely use the air fryer. Next, let's make some frozen fries. I've got some thin cut French fries and I've also got some seasoned tater tots. You can cook these both at the same time. I do them at 400 degrees for about five to seven minutes, depending on how well done you like your fries. All right, so we've got preheated air fryer. Do some tater tots. Most of the time, frozen fries will have a little bit of oil in them already. You can look at the packaging so you can see what the ingredients are. So you don't have to spray them with additional oil. You can if you want them crispier though. Okay, it's been about seven minutes. The tater tots look awesome. The fries look awesome. These are ready to eat. And right when they come out, this is for any fried foods, make sure that you salt them right after they come out of the fryer, the oven, because that's when the oil is going to be most at the surface and it's going to stick more. These thin cut fries are the most like McDonald's. These are actually really good. So what I made were some air fried chickpeas and I don't have this recipe on my website yet, but I have an Instagram reel that I'm gonna show you right here. All I did was take a can of chickpeas, drain them, and then I just toss them in a little bit of olive oil and some Cajun seasoning, some garlic, salt and pepper, some paprika, just all those yummy, delicious seasonings. And then I threw them in the air fryer at 400 degrees. They took about, I don't know, 15 to 20 minutes to get them nice and crispy and crunchy. But then I just snacked on those for days. They were incredible, really high, protein, healthy, low fat, and so those air fried roasted chickpeas, insane. Definitely try those. The last thing I'm making are these frozen chicken tender strips. We make these in the air fryer, 400 degrees for about 20 minutes, flipping halfway between. You can throw them with some buffalo sauce. You can chop it up and put it on a salad. Definitely recommend. Got them in here. Okay, these were in for less than 20 minutes. Take the temp and they're good. These are so delicious. They're perfect for fast food at home. Next, we love doing just frozen sausage links or patties in the air fryer. So all I do is I just take the frozen sausage patties or sausage links like this and I dump them in the air fryer and we cook them for about five to eight minutes depending on how crispy you like them. Okay, the best part about making these sausage links in the air fryer is that they get super crispy as if they were like deep fried, but they're not. And so they get this perfectly browned like crispness all over. They don't get burned or dried out like when I make them on the stove. So the air fryer is honestly amazing. This next one is a little tip or a hack to make your tortilla chips taste 
amazing. So we just put our store-bought tortilla chips in the air fryer. I do almost everything at 400 degrees unless it's kind of more delicate. So 400 degrees and you only need about one to three minutes and then I shake about every 30 seconds just to get them nice and toasty and brown. The flavor honestly tastes so much better. It's like the difference between butter, which is good, and browned butter, which is like phenomenal. So if you have regular tortilla chips, if you air fry them and toast them, they come out warm and toasty. Like the flavor is honestly amazing. So definitely do air fried tortilla chips. The first thing I tell everyone to use their air fryer for is leftover pizza. Pizza reheated in the air fryer tastes just as good, if not better than when you got it from the restaurant. So we are going to transform this cold, sad pizza into something amazing. And here's some tips. To transform your leftover pizza, you can just put it in the air fryer just like this on top of the rack that it comes with, or take each piece of pizza, take the crust and just do a little bit of butter on the crust like this. So I butter the crust. And then I take some garlic salt. This is the red mineral salt, of course. And then I just shake some all over the pizza and the crust. And then I'm just gonna take some crushed red pepper flakes and put them directly on the cold pizza. When you do it like this, the chilies kind of bloom and they get so much more fragrant than if you had put them on after. They taste amazing. And next we'll add it to our air fryer. You can preheat your air fryer if you like, but I rarely do just because I don't think about it all the time. This is also one of the reasons why I like to recommend a larger size basket because if you get a small air fryer, you can only fit like one piece of pizza. Then I'm going to air fry my pizza at 400 degrees or however high your air fryer goes. And I'm just gonna go for about two minutes. After I press start, this is going to preheat and then start counting down. It's a total of about four minutes. Here's our air fryer pizza. Look how golden brown and delicious it is. You can tell that the crust is super just golden crispy. The cheese has like re-melted and browned. Oh my gosh, this is so good. Next, I am making some Texas toast and this stuff is amazing. It is just straight garlic butter on like this tiny piece of toast. So what I'm gonna do is just put it on a piece of foil because I do know that there's a ton of garlic butter in here. I'm going to put it on some foil so then all that yummy garlic butter doesn't drip out of the toast because I mean, that's the point, right? So I'm gonna just take a couple of these frozen pieces and we'll just cook them on the box instructions that says 425 degrees for five to eight minutes. So we'll do 400 degrees for about three to five minutes. It doesn't take usually that long. So I've got my Texas toast in the air fryer and let's just kill two birds with one stone. Let's also make our mozzarella sticks. So these are just frozen mozzarella sticks and they cook for about the same amount of time. So I'm going to put them on this side. These mozzarella sticks are frozen. They only cook at 400 degrees for about five to seven minutes. So they'll be done around the same time. Okay, here we are. I actually flipped the garlic toast about halfway between, but look how amazing that is. Oh my gosh, that smells so good. And our mozzarella sticks have busted just a little bit, but that's okay. They look awesome. Next, we are going to make frozen pepperoni. Okay, hear me out. This is such a good like keto snack. I like to pan fry pepperonis and just eat them kind of like chips when I'm eating low carb. But I just take these big pepperonis, throw them in the air fryer for only one or two minutes, otherwise they get burned. But all the grease drips down and they are so good. Okay, this is what they look like. Just hear me out. Look at how much grease comes off of these. After you let the grease just kind of come off of the pepperonis, then they get crisp and they like turn into little chips. They're so good. But hear me out, these are freaking delicious. Here are the pepperoni chips. So, mm. it's like the best part of the pizza. It's like the crispy, yummy pepperoni that's been like kind of charred. So good. Next, let's make some frozen stir fry veggies. These are literally just frozen and I put them in my preheated air fryer, 400 degrees. Shake them around a little bit. You can spritz them with oil if you want, but these just go in for about five to seven minutes, depending on how well done you like your vegetables. And here we go. These have only been in for about four to five minutes, but they're crispy, they're cooked, they're not soggy, which is awesome. Now what you can do with this is you can add them to some sauce. You can just throw them in with some steak. 
that's chicken and you've got yourself a healthy meal. The next thing we're making is frozen hamburgers. In a preheated air fryer, 400 degrees, it's gonna take a frozen burger patty and you can use fresh one as well. The time will just be a little bit different. I'm going to shake some Montreal steak seasoning on here. That's what we like on our burgers. Or you can just do salt, pepper, garlic powder, and then put them in for 12 minutes. You'll want to start checking around the 10 minute mark and flip them halfway between. So I think our burgers have been cooking about halfway, so let's give them a check. So burgers look good, but they're not quite up to temp yet. So what I'm going to do is just flip them, get rid of some of the juices, and then I'll just season the other side as well. And then we'll put them in for another five minutes. These just finished cooking at 10 minutes and they are good on temp. So if you wanted to put cheese on these, you could just flip them, add a piece of cheese on top and then put them back in the air fryer for about 30 seconds and then you'd have a cheeseburger. This next one is a little tip or a hack to make your tortilla chips taste amazing. So we just put our store-bought tortilla chips in the air fryer. I do almost everything at 400 degrees unless it's kind of more delicate. So 400 degrees and you only need about one to three minutes and then I shake about every 30 seconds just to get them nice and toasty and brown. The flavor honestly tastes so much better. It's like the difference between butter which is good and browned butter which is like phenomenal. So if you have regular tortilla chips, if you air fry them and toast them, they come out warm and toasty. Like the flavor is honestly amazing. So definitely do air fried tortilla chips. The next meal I'm making is Cajun sausage and peppers. So I just chop up the sausages and I have some pepper. I'm gonna drizzle on a little bit of olive oil just so they can't a little crispy. And if you have other vegetables or if you wanna use like a frozen sausage pepper mix. So I just have sausage and the peppers. You could also do onions if you like. All right, after I drizzle with a little bit of olive oil, I'm just going to throw it in to the air fryer, shake it around and I'm just going to sprinkle on with a little additional Cajun seasoning. I'm gonna just do a little bit all over everything. We'll do this at 400 degrees for only about 10 minutes. It's only been about seven or eight minutes. That's why it's really good to always check. So these are looking so good. The peppers are cooked to my liking. I don't want them to get too shriveled. The sausage looks cooked, but let's check. Yep, the sausage is all the way cooked, so no one's getting food poisoning. And how yummy is this? This would be so good over rice, on a salad, pretty much anything, even just like that. This next one is really convenient when you're only cooking for about one or two people. It's making steak in your air fryer. I always make sure the steaks are at room temperature so then they cook evenly. Dry them off with a paper towel because you don't want any liquid on the surface of the meat and then season them with a coarse salt like a kosher salt and pepper or any other seasonings that you like. And then you add your seasoned steaks to the air fryer at 400 degrees for only about 10 to 12 minutes, flipping halfway through. And of course, always check the internal temperature with an instant read thermometer that is so important you can cook the steak to your liking depending on how well done or rare you like it I prefer a medium to medium well steak so anywhere between like 140 and 150 ish is when I'll pull it and then you let it rest add a little bit of butter on there and then you have a delicious steak that you really didn't work very hard for next we love making these bacon wrap smokies so all you need to do is take some of those little sausage little smoky things and and then I like to use thick cut bacon. It just makes it, just, I don't know, it just tastes better with thick cut bacon. I cut the bacon into one inch pieces and then I wrap a piece of bacon around each smoky, secure it with a toothpick, and then I place them on a piece of foil in the air fryer. After that, you take just about a teaspoon of brown sugar and then you kind of pack it onto each individual piece of little smoky wrapped in bacon. So I cook the little smokies at 400 degrees for just about 10 minutes. Make sure you check them halfway through around the five to eight minute mark to make sure they're not burning or if you need to adjust or change anything in the basket. And then they come out so just like caramelized, smoky, crispy, sweet, so, so good. Next, let's make some hot dogs. So these are actually the big old sausages from Costco. They sell them like in a big pack 
pack. And I like these because they have like really clean ingredients and they taste so much better than regular hot dogs. So I'm just going to stick this sausage in the air fryer, cook it for about six to eight minutes and you can eat it on a bun. You can just cut it up, eat it with mustard. That's what I usually like to do with salad and it's so easy. Okay, look at our yummy sausage. The exterior is like super kind of crisp and it's seriously so good. On that same note, something I really like to do is just to make air fryer nachos. So I will add some tortilla chips into like a pie pan, a cake dish, anything that can fit in your air fryer basket and also something that is oven safe. So if you don't have anything like that, you can also just use like a little square of foil, whatever I'm putting in the air fryer, sprinkle them with some cheese and then just toast them for about 30 to 60 seconds. The cheese melts, you can also add other toppings and then you've got super easy nachos. This this last one is something that is incredibly easy and totally foolproof. It's air fryer salmon. This is also a really popular recipe on my website because it's just so simple. So you take your salmon fillets, whatever you want. You just have to make sure you always have an instant read thermometer whenever you're cooking meat, whenever you're cooking really, to make sure that your food is perfectly done, not underdone, not overdone, just perfectly done. Okay, so you just preheat your air fryer to 400 degrees, season your salmon filet with whatever you want. I always like to use the Redmond um, organic lemon pepper mix, seasoning mix, because it has like real pieces of lemon. It's all organic. They use Redmond real salt, which you know I'm obsessed with. And that is just a really easy, simple seasoning to use on fish. So I usually just spray my salmon. I spritz it with a little bit of olive oil spray and then add it to the air fryer at 400 degrees for just like nine to 11 minutes. All air fryers cook at a little bit of a different, you know, temperature and intensity. So you really have to just kind of get to know your air fryer and see what works best but about 9 to 11 minutes and you can flip it if you want and always make sure you check that temperature for salmon you should always cook to a minimum temperature of 145 degrees so that's what I usually do and then I remove the salmon from the air fryer I usually like to also stick a couple vegetables in there too especially if I'm just cooking for myself so broccoli Brussels sprouts green beans something that cooks for about the same amount of time and then you've got a super healthy easy lunch that you really didn't have have to work for at all. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you like it, make sure you subscribe for more and check out this playlist next of all sorts of air fryer content you definitely will need. Okay, we'll see you on the next one. Bye.